German ideal. A combination of strength, determination, and purity. Hello, gentlemen. <coughs> my son, Adam. That used to be my desk before I retired. Which is why you need to apply yourself at school. Stupid old fool. He's perfectly normal for a boy his age. He's got cursed on me for marrying my niece. Uncle, don't be absurd. You'll get what you want in the end. You'll be a painter, an artist. Anything you want, oh my little genius. You little bastard, you burned my beehives again! I think. I think we should take him out of school. He's so talented an artist, and what does he need with science and mathematics? Oh. Uncle. Uncle, what is it? <coughs> oh my God! Addy, Addy, quickly come help me with your father. Uncle. I'm going to Vienna, mother. To see opera. Great opera. I want to study at the Fine Arts Academy. It's too far. You get lost. I've heard too many stories of Jews and gypsies taking advantage. I'm Should not be. a boy, Mother. She's very sick. She won't live until Christmas. She has cancer of the breast. It's a lie. I know it's hard. She'll do anything to ruin my career. You may begin. At the end of 30 minutes, I will collect the sketches, and this time tomorrow, the names of those who have passed this part of the examination will be posted on the door. Did you do well on your drawing exam? Were you accepted? Someday I shall be a great artist, Mother. I know you will. Angela. I know he's only your half-brother. But I want you to take care of him. As if he were your own. He's so sensitive. I don't know how he'll survive without me. Yes. Amen. Andy, I know it's hard, but you have to don't be brave. Tell me how to feel. didn't love her. She was only your stepmother. You wouldn't know how to love anyone. You're just a lump. A peasant. Good for nothing but breeding more bitches like you. I'm sorry, Herr Hitler, you don't have a style. Your people are like little buildings. There's no life in them. Perhaps if you tried architecture or theatrical design, I'm truly sorry. I have a class to teach. Best of luck.
waiting for my inheritance, that's all. It's the Jews for you, you know. Swarm into our country, steal the bread from our tables. Just ask our mayor. They are wolves. Yeah. Beasts of prey in human form. Warm into our country. Take the food from our mouths. And here we are, German and hungry. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm sorry, I thought. I thought you were a Jew. You look like one. Dearest sister, my studies are going very well here. My art is getting a lot of attention. I'll be famous before you know. I look forward to my upcoming birthday when my inheritance is due. I wonder, could you bring it in person? I'll wait for you in the railway station, under the big clock. Adi, it's you. Hello. Goodness, what happened? I thought you said you were doing fine. Yeah, bad luck. Do you have it? No, she would have said something. You could have come home. Say hello to your Uncle Dolph, Gailey. <laughs> She's a shy girl, but very affectionate. <laughs> well, it's the Jews. It's the Jews, they are. Uh, they run the galleries and won't buy my paintings. The Poles. They work for next to nothing, so I can't get a job. That's terrible. You know, there's plenty of work in Linz. Must be joking. No, I'm serious. Here. Happy birthday. Our father worked hard for this. Linz. It's the last place I would go. You can't stay here. Of course not. The sooner I leave this Babylon and races, the better. I'm off where the real Germans are.
Congratulations, Private Hitler. As you were one of only 600 to survive your baptism of fire. It's my privilege to promote you to the rank of corporal. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the war. I need one of you men to deliver a message. Here, soldier, take down. Take this to Lieutenant Goodman at the command post. Wait for a reply. Sit! 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 <laughs> Looks like your fiancé's got a mind of her own, Eddie. <laughs> Foxel, sit! Sit! Everyone was killed. The entire company wiped out. <laughs> entire company, except me, of course. <laughs> Even my dog. My little foxel. Just seconds before the bomb landed, she led me outside as if she knew. She's so loving. So affectionate. And then in one brief moment, <laughs> she's gone. No, she's not. I think she's in the stew. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just shut it off. You're joking. Put the pistol to my toe. And bang! Take it home. For every toe you shoot off. Ten men die because you are there to protect them. Battles are lost. Ground is given up. Ground that we've won through blood and sacrifice. That your brothers died for. And you sit here playing cards. Corporal, that's enough. You owe your lives. Corporal, I will not put up with this. Well enough to walk. I'm sending you on leave. I want you gone by the morning. Yes, sir. Pacifists, Marxists, Socialists, Jews. They call themselves Communists now, and they're everywhere except here, at the front. Who pissed in your brain? Please. Do you know any Jew soldiers? Look around you. Do you see any? I'm a Jew, Eddie. So shut up and eat. This has to get through as soon as possible. We don't have much time left. It's dangerous. If either of you makes it, you'll deserve an iron cross. Yes, sir. Go with God. Yes, Corporal? Nothing, sir. I followed your orders, sir. I deserve this medal. 
I risked my life. We all risk our lives, every day. You gave me your word, Lieutenant. Believe me, if it was up to me. I did believe you. Anyone else would have laughed. What do you mean by that? I've always stood up for your people. When anyone said, oh, you can't trust them, I pointed to you, sir. gentlemen. I'm here to tell you you'll all be packing out in the morning. We're being deployed to the eastern front. Sir, only 50 kilometers from Paris. You'll think we're on the retreat. Those are General Hindenburg's orders, Corporal. There's your prize. Now go tell the men in the front lines. Sir! No way to win a war. wouldn't do that. It irritates the eyes, swells the lids. But once we have these bandages off, you will see as well as ever. How long will it take to get back, to get back to the front? Don't think about that. Think of the future. You have a wife, a fiancé. I have to get back. I have to get back to the front. A message, head off. Push. Gentlemen, may I have your attention? I have an important announcement to make. Earlier today, the Army High Command agreed to negotiate the terms of surrender. War is over. We must place ourselves now at the mercy of the victors. Pray they will be generous. The end. It's the beginning. militia, led by Captain Ernst Röhm and others, took back the city today after a tense two weeks of communist rule. What happens now? That Germany's best kept secret is out. That the demobilized soldiers of the war are still active and armed in our countrysides. Again, you'll be late. Don't worry, Frauschmann. These things never start on time. <laughs> With the collapse of the monarchy and now the communist regime, what new form of government awaits us? Deep feelings of Nationalistic pride are springing up against, no, no, in defiance of the communists, of the allies, 
of anyone who thinks Germany is finished. All right, everybody, come on now. Let's get started. Let's get started. What are you doing here? Sorry. Sorry. Judge. Ah, Herr Gelly. Good day for the news. Bad for a wedding. Thank you for waiting. Well, I couldn't very well start without you. Officially, the Reds are gone. The Army needs to make sure they stay gone. It's my job as head of Army information to prevent the sort of civil unrest that happened last spring from happening again. I gather you're very outspoken in your nationalist leanings. I believe in Germany, sir. Good. There are nearly 50 political factions in this city at the moment. And I use informants to identify the more aggressive ones. Does this interest you? Informing, sir? One of these groups is the German Workers' Party by a man called Anton Drexler. They gather in the back room of a beer hall. Just an excuse to have a drink, I expect, but pay them a visit and tell me what they're planning. But don't drink, sir. Just listen, then. But interest equals slavery. The Berlin-centered economy, which is currently collapsing, leaves us no other choice than to declare Bavarian independence. The state of Bavaria must separate from the rest of Germany and form its own nation. Insane. Of course, we are a different society. We are predominantly Catholic. They are not. We're all German. Culturally, perhaps, there are similarities. But even then... What about Parsifal? Lohengrin. Young man, I'm talking about reality, not fairy tales. You're talking about the purity of the German people, which is no fairy tale. As I was saying, interest... Find out who he is. What's this? It's my report from the German Workers' Party, sir. I only ask for a few words. They've asked me if I'd like to join. I haven't accepted yet. Should we be concerned about them? That's all I need to know. Well, it's club life of the lowest form, sir. But I like the underlying politics. The nationalist agenda must include elimination of the Jews. What's this have to do with your report? Just some thoughts of my own, I added. Do you disagree? It's just not feasible. Oh, it's very feasible, sir. Just drive them out. Deport them if necessary. Can you imagine a world without them? How pure, how holy. Do you think there are any Jews in Valhalla? Do you have my papers, Maya? Yes, Captain Rudd. I should like to introduce you to Corporal Hitler, sir. He's one of our informants. If you'll excuse us, Corporal. He's an odd one, isn't he? It is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speaker for this evening. Many of you may remember him by his comments at our last meeting. So please welcome Herr Adolf, Adolf Hitler. When I was a boy, I heard the story. Louder. I heard the story of the Holy Grail and how it could only be found by one who was pure of heart. Indeed, we have a history of purity in this country, but we have fallen on hard times. Our military is in tatters, our economy collapsing. But it's not poverty or weakness that's our problem. It's indifference. Is anyone listening? That's the problem nowadays, isn't it? No one cares. No wonder we face extinction.
pride. Pride is a weapon. A sword to be used against our enemies. But don't be deceived. They are strong. Stronger than we are. And it's not the French or the English I'm talking about. Our enemies. Live among us. Socialists. Communists. The foreign invaders who come to our country to destroy us and take over our lives! <laughs> In the six months since the fall of the communist government, the new German democracy has given birth to dozens of political factions, but none is growing more rapidly than the German Workers' Party, newly dubbed the Party of the National Socialists, whose fiery speaker, Adolf Hitler, preaches against the influence of foreign invaders. Who alone are responsible for the moral decadence that now riddles our society? The Jews! The Jews! Yes! Who call themselves German, but who are now, and who have always been, unwelcome, unwanted, and they are everywhere! <laughs> Invading our government, stripping us of our savings, raping our families and our heritage. I tell you, friends, this is war. A war that is soon to turn, for the invaders will become the victims! <laughs> Frida. Herr Stengel. Oh, it's good to see you. Look at you. Who's this? Is this little Egon? Mm -hmm. He looks just like you did when you were his age. Frida. This is my wife, Elena. She was raised in America, but don't worry. She's bred from good German stock. Her family's from Bremen. Oh, how do you do, Frau Stengel? I apologize for the mess. I I'll have it cleaned by morning. Perhaps... Frida, don't worry yourself. It's lovely. It'll be just fine. Would you like to hold him? Yes, I'd love it. <laughs> He's so gorgeous. Come. <laughs> Do you like it? It's extraordinary. It's everything that you promised. And this isn't the half of it. There are such opportunities here for us now. Germany is starting to rebuild itself, and we are going to make pots of money. <laughs> Darling, it's impolite to talk about money. Mm, it'd be good for the country, too. Will you hear my plan? Don't bother me with your plans. You just let me handle the dinner party. Mm. start. Oh, and come in the front next time where people can see you. My supporters will slow me down. Seems it's plenty tonight. Nonsense. The crowd is bigger than last time. Unfortunately, there are some communists out there. So, go easy on the rhetoric. A riot would only get us in the papers. Isn't that what we want? Universal military service shall be abolished in Germany. 
Germany will pay war reparations for all damage done to Allied civilians and their property. Responsibility for the outbreak of the war rests solely on German shoulders. But a few of the demands of the Treaty of Versailles. Impossible, you say. It will break us. But don't you see that's the point? They want to break us. And who do I mean by they? I mean the Reds! These fools who spread a disease called communism to empty-headed dreamers. Look who's talking! The most effective medicine is a bullet! That's the best way to cure us of these idiots! These idiots are men like you with Shut nothing up. to say! Right. Marx was a Jew! The Communist Party is run by Jews! <laughs> It's all a plot to destroy Germany, to bastardize our blood, infiltrate our lives. They want to wipe the Aryan race from the face of the earth. Fritz, you're writing. No, I'm just thinking, that's all. About? About what's happening. Munich, Bavaria, Germany. My three rivals. It's so exciting. Sophie, Germany is at the crossroads of history. We grew up with the Kaiser, telling us what to do, and we're finally thinking on our own. We have the communists on the left, the social democrats in the middle, the Free Corps, joining forces with the right. It's one big political brawl. That doesn't worry you? Why should it? <sighs> Nothing good ever comes from brawls. When are you men going to learn that? Are you women going to learn that extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures? Yes, war, assassination. All right, all right. I won't argue with you on that. But I promise you, Whatever comes of this brawl will be extraordinary. Look, we need more men like you in the party. Oh, we hate the communists. Wherever they go, we'll go. It's whether or not we'll do anything for the party is entirely up to you. Yeah. Oh, you know, I've always been a great admirer of yours. Your reputation, your war medals. Oh, my war medal is here. I'm prouder of this than of any Iron Cross. Speaking of me, Herr Hitler, you speak of all my men. We're all soldiers here. You see, these men, and together with thousands and thousands of others, serve our country well. Even after they were abandoned by the army, they continued to fight to put down a communist revolution. Yes. Now, all of a sudden, the rich that backed us up are turning away. Why? <laughs> I don't understand. But if my men can crush a revolution that can also create one. Because they love this country as much as you or I do. Yes. The only little problem is they're unemployed. Yes. Not so long ago, we Germans thirsted after blood. We had half the world in trenches crawling through the mud. We must have victory. How come we lost the war? Where were all those leaders that we counted on the phone? Oh my god, Ernst. Is that you? Friedrich. Friedrich Hollander, my god, what are you doing here? I run this place. I direct the show. I write these songs. I am this place. <laughs> Freddie and I went to school together. We were uh, sparring partners. In the fencing club. That too. And this beautiful lady is? His current sparring partner, Helena Hunstengel. It's a pleasure to meet you. Friedrich Hollander. That's my wife. Poison gas. And now that we have seen the face of war, we're not the same man that we were before. Everyone's depressed, which is bad for the economy, but excellent for cabaret. German people don't need democracy, for God's sake. They need music, laughter, someone to tell them what to do so they can get in line and follow. Don't tell me you've become a nationalist. I'm a satirist, Ernst, the most dangerous politician of them all. <laughs> <laughs> you just fell in straight journey. It's time for fun and games again in Germany. 
speaking of humor, I'm going to hear Hitler tomorrow. Would you like to come? Hitler? The anti-Semite? The National Socialist anti-Semite. Call them Nazis just to piss them off. I hear he's fascinating. Oh, that's very open-minded of you. You mean for a Jew? Yes. I'm not supporting him, for God's sake. I need new material. That's what they tell us. What they mean is, they will survive. We surrendered in November at a time when we were perched on the edge of victory. Betrayed by the cowards and the traitors within our ranks. How do we fight them? We unite. We must join together for a greater Germany. Clean him up a bit, he might be worth something. He's a cartoon. We will sacrifice. We will struggle, yes. But only then will we triumph. And we will triumph! <laughs> the hero Lundgren as our model. And the music of Wagner as our inspiration. We will hang the profiteers. Crush the communists. We will disinfect our country of the Jewish moment. <laughs> Funny. After 500 years, you'd think I'd be used to it. Ernst. Ernst. We will drop! We will drop! We will drop! We will Excuse me, Herr Hitler. you speak last time. You mentioned Wagner. I was told I could find you here. That you never leave. Herr Hitler, I was wondering... Just... Just play. I know some people who would love to hear you speak, who are not likely to go to a beer hall. The wealthy. I've met a few. Armchair politicians. Care more about their money than to do their own country. Yes, but surely as your party's propaganda leader, you must know that in order to defend their money, they'll spend it, a good deal of it. That is, if someone they trust tells them it's a safe bet. That's where I come in. Herr Hitler, I can make you very popular. Far more popular than him. But you have to admit, the color catches the eye. Why don't you have a poster? And a flag. Your picture should be everywhere, with your name in large letters. You might consider a more distinctive look. For example, when you think of Lenin, you think of bearded and bald. Not that that's attractive, but... Well, it does stick with you.
friends, we never talk so openly about politics in America. That's all we talk about here. Of course, there are some things we don't mention, such as Captain Rome and his recall. Now that the Reds are gone, they still want money. So what do we do? Don't talk to me about democracy. Masses can't lead themselves. In the old days, one man decided what was best for the country, and there was order and discipline. Now everyone votes on everything, and the result is chaos. I assure you, Baron, it works in America. There, they have states with governors under a president in Washington. Here, we have the Prussian state, the Bavarian state, and so forth, under a president in Berlin. The structure is essentially the same. It's not the same thing, Ernst, and you know it. Germans need to be led, preferably by a man we can control. It doesn't have to be smart, merely pliable and a bachelor. So the women will vote for it. <laughs> well said, Captain Goering. This person you've invited tonight, Herr Helmstangel, he has the workers here? Some of the workers, but mostly the middle class, which is far better for our purposes. I think you'll find him rather persuasive. He is at the moment a diamond in the rough, though, and I do mean rough. Herr Hitler, I'm Helena, Ernst's wife. He's told me so much about you. Come. <laughs> now, with respect, the Kaiser's a coward. Better off without him, really. No, no, we need, we need someone with courage. Courage to drive out these foreign agitators. A man who would smile in the face of the machine gun and scare the rabble shitless. Would that be you, sir? No, Captain Goring. Not me, sir. I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. <laughs> Above all, we must remove the Jews. They run our banks. They lost us the war. They alone are responsible for the economic disaster we're in. Sir, my father was a Jew. And a stronger patriot could not be found at this table. I am the man I am today because of him. Baron. Surely he wasn't talking about your father. He meant the communist Jews. Didn't you, Herr Hitler? You will excuse us, Frau Hamstegel. Hitler, please. Please accept my apologies. I'm sure he meant no disrespect. My husband and I have several Jewish friends in America. What this man is doing, madam, is heating up the hatred in this country to boiling point. And all for his own purposes, I might add. May God forgive you and your husband for supporting him. You know what it's like to be mistaken in a friend. If he has deceived you as to his heritage, who knows what else he's capable of? You're a very gifted speaker, Herr Hitler. I think it is an honor to be at this table with you. I began life as a quite gifted artist, Captain Goring. brought something I want you all to see. Simple. Arian. What does it mean? It 
means the unconquerable. Do you like it, Fry Hapstengel? It's very hypnotic. Tell us, Herr Hitler, have you considered publishing? Well done. Thank you. Thank you. The turning point of my life was when the blindfold was ripped from my eyes. But only then will we triumph. And we will triumph. The Jew! In all his terrible shame, we will hang the profiteers. We recognize him. We recognize him. We will make them pay. We, uh... Who is this? My new friends. What are you arguing about? We have been approached by the German Socialist Party to join forces. Our principles are similar. We can negotiate a new platform to eliminate our differences, and together, both parties will be even stronger. Uh, some of the others here disagree. I see. Would you like to know what I think? Yes, of course. I think you're a traitor. But Herr Hitler... Compromise is not possible! If their members wish to quit their party and join us, that's another thing. But our principles are our principles and cannot be changed. Once again, Drexler, you prove my point. This is a tedious... Amateur organization. And you are a jealous fool. Which brings me to this. Who wrote this? Don't pretend you don't know what it is. One of our own members calls me a dangerous demagogue. Are you out to destroy me? I tell you, sir, I don't need you or your party. I will form my own party. Of course, we will not merge if that is how you feel. There are some who question your financial ties. That is all. We are not a party of the bourgeoisie. It's, it's bound to have an impact. The leadership. What? I want you to step down. Name me as your successor. Yes, of course. The committee must approve unanimously. Then make a public announcement. I have your attention. The leadership committee has just made an important decision. I no longer feel qualified to lead our struggle. So, it is my privilege to present you with our new leader. 
a new Führer. Adolf Hitler. No, no, a little higher. That's good. That's very good. Beautiful. Marvelous. No. No. Yes. Wonderful choice, my Führer. But don't you think this look is better? Excuse me, Herr Hitler. A message from Bavarian Prime Minister von Kahn. Seems I'm being asked to cancel my speeches. Not asked, ordered. The Chancellor wants to pay war reparations and honor the Treaty of Versailles. As a consequence, the people are ready to riot. Cars ordered a state of emergency, place himself in charge. He adds, if Hitler speaks, it may only stir things up. Stir things up. Stir things up. Have you been to the marketplace? Do you know how much it costs for a loaf of bread these days? 500,000 marks. 500,000 marks. The wheelbarrows aren't big enough to carry the money in. And he's afraid I'll stir things up. You tell Commissar Carr. This is not a time for silence. This is a time for revolution. Right. Well, I suppose that leaves me. I know you're upset. Of course you are. Commissar von Kahn is acting rashly. Herr Hitler, you mustn't take it personally. We both want the same thing. Right now, von Kahn thinks that he doesn't need you. You must be clever and show him that he does. That you have the support of the people. Hmm? I want to show you something. This is an article by an editor named Fritz Gehrlich that is, on the whole, complimentary. Everyone who's anyone reads him. And he also happens to write Commissar von Kahr's speeches. I think you should pay him a visit. I baked these this morning. I hope you like them. You must have been very brave, Herr Hitler. The Iron Cross is no small feat. Thank you, dear. I've heard you speak, uh, Hitler. You're very persuasive. You know, we share some beliefs. The need for a political leader, a strong voice to guide. Yes, well, we need someone to take charge. Let's try out this Treaty of Versailles. Refuse to pay the. War reparations. War reparations. Right, here it is. 
What's that? Oh, uh, uh, helps me to keep notes during an interview. What? That way, when I get back... This isn't an interview. What made you think that? Carl's a fool. I know he's your friend, but he has to realize I am not the enemy. If he wants to make a stand against Berlin, fine. I won't stop him. In fact, I should be his partner. But you have fundamental areas of disagreement. You both wish to lead. Lead? I have no ambition to lead. So long as Carl keeps us a place in his government, that's all we want. piece of the cake, as it were. You know, you know, we could use a man like you. You could perhaps write for us. On behalf of the National Socialist Party? Yes. <laughs> but I don't write propaganda. You said anything about propaganda. I'm talking about the truth. Look around you. Immigrants, Jews, stealing everything we work for. The German Jews. Any party that comes to power will surely guarantee that. We're talking about Jews here! They're not citizens. They have no rights. You're supposed to be a nationalist. You should know better. Never compromise on the Jews. Never. He's insane. A complete psychotic. He may be a compelling speaker on stage, but in person, I could see into his eyes, and what I saw was terrifying. And I intend to shut him down. With all due respect, Commissar Van Kar, you need to handle him with care. Don't worry, I will. I know how to deal with Adolf Hitler. There were over 40 political matters last weekend. Reds killing SA, SA killing Reds. General von Lusso and Colonel Seize here are very concerned, as am I. Well, if my party had a voice in your government, perhaps we might find less violent ways of expressing ourselves. Which is exactly what I'm prepared to offer you. In a few weeks' time, General von Lossow and Colonel Seize intend to march on Berlin, a putsch, to bring the national government under our control. Would you like to be part of that putsch? Yes, of course. Then you must be very quiet. You can speak, give the impression of business as usual. But you must also promise me, if you wish to play any part in our government, there will be no more violence. Berlin mustn't believe we have designs against them. You have my full support. Just keep your men quiet. Can't do that. Of course you can. You're the leader. They listen to you. I pay them to listen it's to you. It's not a question about money, it's the principle. If there's a red anywhere near, there's gonna be a fight. Look, I don't care how you do this. Just keep them quiet. You won't listen. You have to find some other way, some kind of figurehead. Make it tighter. So, how is your father, Hess? Very well, General Ludendorff. He sends his best. <laughs> Who is this? May I present Herr Hitler to you, sir? I believe you've met before. One of Captain Goering's soirees. Oh, yes. Um, what uh, can I do for you? No, no, that's too tight. Let it out. 
Your Excellency is the um, heroic leader of the nationalist right, while I am but its spokesman. No, no, more, more. I can't breathe. I was wondering if I could perhaps discuss a little plan I have. We are confident of gaining Your Excellency's support. Support? For what? We're planning a transference of power. Bavarian Commissar von Kahr has seen the wisdom of joining the National Socialists for a march in Berlin. Well, good for you. Those idiots at the Reichstag haven't learned the lesson, so kick them out. We need true Germans running this country again like we had with Bismarck. I knew him, you know. Hmm? My God, what a man. So, what's your plan? And can you carry this off? I won't be made a fool of, you know. Your Excellency, we are confident of our success. Hmm? By the way, I'm, I'm speaking next week at the Circus Krona. I would be honored if you would be my guest. For many years, my friends, I was like a prisoner, blindfolded, fending off blows from every direction. What had I done to deserve this treatment? I did not even know who my enemy was. An innocent victim of greed, and of hatred, and of cunning. In recent years, we have all suffered like this. Germany, more than any of us. Yet there is no need to live in darkness. The turning point in my life was when the blindfold was ripped from my eyes. And I could see my enemy, our enemy, the Jew. We recognize him. We recognize him. Nobody leaves. No one. We see how his filth and his greed have stung at the heart of this great country. We must crush this vermin. We must wipe this plague from our nation. What we say tonight will soon be forgotten. What we do will live on for a thousand, thousand years. Also said we have to wait two more weeks before they take action. Zeiser was in Berlin. Some important meeting. Carr wouldn't see me. But in two days, he intends to address all the right-wing political factions at one of their beer halls. All of them. That is, except you. He's our Fox you, lad. He clearly intends to form a coalition with all of your competitors and create a new government without you. He brought you into this simply to keep you quiet. We'll move without them, then. We'll seize Munich. We'll march on Berlin. The people are with us. Listen to them. Gentlemen, our time has come. Front car here. Rome and his men wait here. We surround the barracks, then attack. Once the situation is secure, I'll telephone Rome here at the beer hall. Half of my men will cut the lines at the telephone exchange. The rest of us will secure the military barracks. No information in or out of Munich, unless I say so. Gentlemen, I know this is often said and deeply felt, 
but none more deeply than tonight. May God and the people of Germany be with us. Brothers, you and I, together, we will make history. Your papers, please. I couldn't sleep last night worrying about this speech. His popularity is rising. If people don't hear the truth... Don't worry, they will. Tonight, we unify the other parties and put an end to that awful plan. us to the edge of chaos. And now we have a choice. Men act like beasts, beasts act like men. They both need training now and then. Oh, we can with courage and faith. Leap! What's a drumming? What's coming? The National Revolution has begun. The building is surrounded. No one may leave. Any trouble, you will be shot. Inside. Inside! Stay calm. Remain in your places. We have the building surrounded. Get me a little more. Sorry to surprise you like this, but then you're no stranger to intrigue, are you? I'm forming a provisional Reich government. I will be in charge of the police. General Ludendorff will be in charge of the army. And I will have a post for each of you. I need your support. You seem to have planned this well. And where is General Ludendorff? If he supports you as you say he does, why is he not here? Oh, so the little man pulled it off, did he? Give me a moment. Keep your head! He's a little late. What's going on? You sure he's coming at all? Shut up! He's here. Your leaders are with us. Will you join them? Will you stand behind us? The German Revolution begins tonight. Group heading towards the barracks. You mean they fell back? Pull out! Come 
believe this is happening. Nobody does anything right. That's your conscience. Conscience. A Jewish invention, sir. Conscience. Do you mind if we visit our wives, General? They'll be worried. Of course, of course. Mustn't worry, the poor women. Mobilize the army. Now. What the hell's happening? There are too many of them. Somebody must have betrayed us. What are you doing here? Where's Carr and the others? Oh, I let them go. Their wives were a concern. Well, that's all right. They gave me their word. They would notify the authorities. Good God! Follow me! Let's go. We'll take to the streets. Oh. We'll take to the streets. We'll go to the war ministry. There were 8,000 people at the circus Krona the other night. As soon as they know what's happening, they will support us. It's me. I've got to get out. It's all gone sour. Don't let anyone in. I want you to take the children and go to your mother's. Ernst, what happened? I'll call you there. Frida! Frida! I know a safe place. Turn right up ahead. Shut up! 
Herr Hedler. He's on a hunger strike. If he doesn't testify, or worse, if he dies, they'll come after everyone, including us. Get out of your mind. Elena, someone has to answer for the putsch. For God's sake, it was treason. He won't listen to his men. If he likes you, all you have to do is shore up his confidence. No. Helena! Our lives, our future, depend on this. Myself. You mustn't lose hope. So many people believe in you. Do you? The first time I saw you, I knew that you were a great man. Let us proceed. General Ludendorff, you have been accused of high treason. How do you plead? Not guilty. Adolf Hitler, you have been accused of high treason. How do you plead? <coughs> Guilty. Are you a German citizen? You're talking about a piece of paper of the blood that runs through my veins. <laughs> Answer the question. No. In November of last year, you led a putsch against the Bavarian state and German Reich. You coerced and threatened Commissar Kahr, General Lasso and Colonel Zeisser. You have been accused of high treason and called an enemy of the state. If a thief takes your money and you take it back, does that make you also a thief? In 1918, we were betrayed by the November criminals, the ones who claim to be our leaders. They entered the war signed the Treaty of Versailles, and that was
was high treason. This is supposed to be an interrogation, not a speech. I was simply taking back that which was stolen from us five years before. Namely, the right. The right to defend ourselves against the wishes of an incapable parliament. I used no force. I used no force. I was supported by Commissar Carr. Why isn't he on trial? If I am guilty of anything, then I am guilty of fighting to defend the rights of the German people. Fascinating, isn't he? I was absolutely convinced that it would be over. That he would be exposed as cold-blooded and psychotic. But they cheered him, Sophie. Hitler stood up in the court of law and claimed that all he wants is to give the nation back to its people. And the people believed him. Even the judge was impressed. Let's figure this out. Forget who are. People. You've met him. He's not human. He's studied people in order to appear human, but all he's discovered is our fear and our hatred. And now we're all running toward a monster we should be running from. Extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures. You said that once, remember? When all those drunks in the beer halls were throwing mugs at each other. I told you nothing good would come of it. It was then. Come inside now, I'll fix you something to eat. Fritz? Thank you. For what? Listen, everybody, we have a new front page. On the night of the putsch, Commissar von Kahr was promising an initiative that would have turned this country around had he been heard. I know because I wrote it. Tonight, we are the voice of sanity. Listen, history has brought us to the edge of chaos and we now have a choice. Either we can jump into the abyss or with courage and faith, leap to the other side. The abyss is Hitler's party of national freedom. socialism, a party of intolerance and hatred, false imagery and false hope, a pit of nonsense and outright lies. They are the ones who deserve to be hung! He's an agitator who believes our fears will drown out our reason. And the worst we can do, the absolute worst, is to do nothing. All right, let's get to work. Treasure! General Ludendorff, the court finds you not guilty and releases you from custody. Herr Hitler, court finds you guilty of treason. Yes! You are hereby sentenced to a fine of 200 gold marks and five years in Landsberg prison. You will, you will be eligible for parole. 
in nine months. This way, please. Hey, Hitler. There's a courtyard you can exercise in. You're welcome to have as many visitors as you wish. Herr Hess is living just next door and can serve as your secretary during your stay here. If there's anything we can do to make you more comfortable, please let us know. Something wrong, sir? They're dying. Take them away. I don't like buying things around. Yes, sir. And if I may say so, sir, it's an honor to serve you. Welcome, my Führer. Thank you, Hess. Well, it's lovely, isn't it? Only two things missing, an audience and an income. Perhaps I'll write a memoir. What do you think? I think it's an excellent idea. Good. Then I need a publisher. I was thinking, now that Hitler's in jail and we've nothing to worry about, why not go to America? Darling, she's sick. Find a doctor better than anyone here and get her well. From now on, I promise my family before everything. Herr Hamsteinmann? There's a call for you from Landsberg Prison. Austria's lovely this time of year, isn't it? I was... I escaped by pure luck. I thought my being on the outside might be helpful. No. Nushas, how very generous of you. As a consequence, I've seen more of your wife lately than of you. Yes, she's a great admirer of yours. And you're not? <laughs> of course I am. You know I'd do anything for your... our cause. I'm writing my memoirs. Four and a half years against stupidity, lies and cowardice. Effective title, don't you think? Yes. Yes, it's very good. You might consider shortening it a bit, oh, but... you see? You see? Now, you're good at these kind of things. That's why I want you to be my publisher. <laughs> but, Herr Hitler, my family only publishes art books. Besides, I'm taking Helena and the children to America, where... No, you're not. I'm tired of you running out on me all the time. Our daughter's very ill. Now, you listen to me. I've kept your name out of this. It would be very hard on your family if you were suddenly in prison too, don't you think? You can stay and help me with my book. Now that you're uh, absent, the party lacks leadership. And since my name has been closely tied to it, I feel I must continue with it. By the way, Rome thinks it's a wonderful idea. He feels that with my political muscle behind him, he can rebuild his army. I might even at some point run for president. But you needn't worry. We'll have a place for you when you return. How very thoughtful of you. Take a letter, Hess. Party headquarters. I hereby resign from politics. I want nothing more to do with the party. I'm too busy writing. 
But, sir, without you, the party is finished. Exactly. Today, it seems to me providential that fate should have chosen Brownow as my birthplace. In this little town, Bavarian by blood lived my parents. My father, a civil servant. No. Make that dutiful, civil servant. My mother, devoted above all to her children. Once, as I was strolling through the inner city, I suddenly encountered an apparition in black kaftan and black hair locks. Is this a gene? Was my first thought. And then my question assumed the new form. Is this a German? They are strong. Stronger than we are. We need more room to live. To expand. Sustain ourselves. Germany will either be free of Jews, or there will be no Germany. We need a leader. A man of great vision. A man with the courage to grind his enemy's bones into the dust. And he lives. He lives today. And he will lead his people to victory. It's been an honor, my Fiora. The fever's down. I finally got her to sleep. Thank God. Can we begin now? Yes, darling, of course we can. There you go. What is it? What is it? <gasps> Look! A whole zoo. A rhino. A lion. A tiger. A giraffe. A monkey. It's just what I wanted. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I have a gift for you. A gift for you. <laughs> Hans Stenger. Elaine. You're looking lovely as always. Herr Hitler. What a surprise. Did they make you break rocks in prison? <laughs> no, no, Aegon. But I did something much harder than that, thank you. I wrote a book. Are you publishing it, Daddy? No, I'm afraid not, Aegon. We only publish art books. You mean there aren't any pictures? No, no. No pictures. But it will sell very well. And uh, whoever publishes will make a lot of money. Herr Hitler, if you wish to talk about business or politics, we could have easily... Of course not. It's Christmas. That's not why I came. Mommy! Would you excuse me, Herr Hitler? Our daughter's not been well. We've both been up all night. No, no. I'll go. You rest. Is she very ill? Yes. We don't... We don't know what's wrong with her. Helena. I... All the time I was in prison, I thought only of you. When you saved my life. When you took the gun from my hand. Please, Hitler. No, please. No, no, please. I have never admired a woman as much as I admire you. So brave. So beautiful. You are the perfect woman. Wife. Mother. Thank you. She's 
She wants her mother. out of the hen house for so long, even when he's promised he's through? Yes, well, you're a publisher, or at least that's what they say. You should know better than believe everything you read. As soon as my plans are set, you'll be the first to know. In the meantime, I'm off to the country. Happy Christmas. Everyone in Linz is talking about you. I've become the famous half-sister. Oh, your mother would be so proud. I'm glad you could come. So this is the house. I can manage that. Oh, speaking of proud mothers, Gelly's changed quite a bit since you last saw her. Okay. Oh, thank you so much for bringing us here. <laughs> It's my pleasure. I always think it important for family to stick together. What do you think? Yes. I'm honored that you asked me to publish your book, Hitler. It will make quite an impression on this country. <laughs> Only a war veteran like you can understand what the bourgeois publisher cannot. <laughs> oh. I must warn you, though, I don't expect huge sales at first. The economy's too good. Democracy seems to be working. That's only temporary. I can assure you, our poor country hasn't seen the end of hardship just yet. <laughs> I can't help but notice, Herr Hitler, the mountain air has done you good. Not to mention certain other distractions. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Uh, beautiful vistas. The lake. <laughs> My Fuhrer, we just received an urgent message from Munich. The party needs to know who you support in the presidential elections. Hindenburg or Ludendorff? Ludendorff, of course. Why not? He's not expected to win, Fuhrer. In fact, he's expected to lose quite badly. All the more reason, then. Gelly! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's so dull if I could hide up here with you forever. It's so beautiful. Hide? I'm not hiding. But all those men coming to see you? Why don't you ever go into the city to see them? I think you would like that. <laughs> it's very nice. Have you ever been to Munich? I've never been out of Flint. Perhaps I'll take you sometime. Would you? <laughs> Would you really? I said perhaps. <sighs> Off you go.
Closer. In a circle. Around me. Like this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Faster. 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 Uh, yes. Um. so-called assimilation, the Jew defiles our inexperienced young blonde girls and thereby destroys something given to the earth by God's good grace. Paranoid ramblings, Fritz, paranoid ramblings. Nobody takes them seriously anymore. Case in point, you keep writing about it, but nobody is buying our newspapers. He is yesterday's news. People do not care anymore. We must make them care. Do you know, according to him, the Jews have a plan for world domination and that we must act ruthlessly. He's preaching war. Oh, now, that's ridiculous. There are over half a million Jews in this country in every walk of life, in every profession. Some of our most successful citizens are Jewish. How can he possibly wage war against Read them? the book. See for yourself. I have done. Now, you listen to me. You cannot continue to give front page coverage to a man whose book sold what? 5,000 copies? Now, as your friend, I appreciate your passion. But as your publisher, I must warn you. We're losing us money. Now you have a decision to make, Fritz. Do you wish to continue to write for this paper or not? You know I do. Then we have an understanding. No more Hitler. When are you coming back? How can I possibly return to Munich? Uh, I don't mean to Munich, I mean to the party. The longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to come back. There's dissension in Munich, and already there's a stronger presence up in the north. Ah, uh, Strasser. Yes, Strasser, but also this young man is grooming a very powerful speaker who is demanding the party divorce itself entirely from you. What's his name? Josef Goebbels. Are you in or out of politics? I need to know. I'll tell you what I need. Someone I can trust. I'm not surprised we lost. That's because we're running a political party without strong leadership. Call a meeting in Munich. I want all the party leaders in attendance in three days. Three days? My Fuhrer, I don't think the leaders in the North will have enough time to You're organize. right, you're right. Make that two days. Angela, pack up your daughter's luggage. Gailey's off to the city. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's unfortunate. But if my defeat forced the party to call you out of retirement, it was certainly worth it. <laughs> Together, you and I will reunite our shattered army. I beg your pardon? You should beg everyone's pardon. We're in this mess because of you. You lost us a putsch because you were late. You released Von Carr so he could call in the government troops. And now this ineffective, not to say laughable campaign. I have never been spoken to like this in my whole life. Well, perhaps if you had, you wouldn't have turned out to be such an embarrassment. Stop the car. Stop the car. Stop the car! So you won't be joining us for the reunification. How very unfortunate. Gregor Strasser. How good to see you. I'm glad Berlin could spare you on such short notice. Did you know your agitation almost cost me my parole? It wasn't meant to, my Führer. Of course not. <coughs> Have you met my niece? Ah. The famous Gailey. <laughs> this must be her Goebbels. The young man who so desperately wants me out of the party. Take care of her husband. Why should it keep it quiet? It's right. I had hoped reports of your bickering had been exaggerated. Sit, sit. Where's Ludendorff? He's feeling unwell, but I'm glad the rest of you could come. The purpose of this meeting, gentlemen, is to solidify the party under me. I expect your full support. We must enter government by legal means. Then, we can take it apart. Our new policy is to win the elections. Agitation is a thing of the past. Meaning what? The SA are to be bridal danced. They may sing, march, carry flags, but they must keep calm unless I say otherwise. We're not a Sunday shooting club, Adolf. We're a militia. Not anymore. My personal security will now be handled by the SS. Your men give off the wrong impression. I don't give a damn about impressions. But without the SA, without us, our loyalty... The wheels of history have turned! The plan has changed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Does anyone else wish to leave? During my absence, you fought, you bickered, you made no progress whatsoever. Therefore, I propose to relieve you of the responsibility of leadership. The interests of this movement, from now on, will be my concern. If I should fail, I will stand down. But I will not fail. In this struggle, there are but two possible outcomes. Either the enemy passes over our body, or we will pass over theirs. If I should fall, wrap my body in a swastika banner. Seek her! Seek her! I don't understand. What's the point? Why should I campaign for others? You can't run for president, my Fuhrer, unless you have your citizenship. You can't get your citizenship unless you have friends in the Reichstag. These people, 
want to invest in you, not the party. You're the most visible symbol we have. Excuse me. You're right. I'm fine. I was so sorry to hear about your loss. She was such a beautiful child. Well, this party's been a relief, really. It's given me something else to think about. It's tomorrow when there's nothing to do that I dread. Then perhaps I can help. Hey, Hamstangle, I've been meaning to ask you about your musical training. Herr Weidmann is uh, helping us acquire some property in the center of town. With your undoubted skill as a hostess, perhaps you might like to help him raise some funds. I would be honored. Yes. Yes, thank you. Good. Thank God, I'm Maurice. I could hardly breathe in there. Mm. Would you like one? I'd love one, but he wouldn't approve. Your uncle is a good man. He's protective, that's all. He's a monster. You can't imagine what he asks of me. And this will be our Fuhrer's office. Grand, spacious, inviting in the sun, as he does. We need your support as we begin our campaign for seats in the Reichstag. But before we rebuild our nation, we must first rebuild our party. And what better place to start than here? That was wonderful. It's like you've been doing it your whole life. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Let's celebrate. Just us. We'll go to the cabaret. Oh, darling, I don't think the cabaret is a place we should patronize nowadays, do you? Besides, I have to work late. Right. Of course. If it's raining, if it's sunny, if you're freezing or dripping sweat. Friedrich, how are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> um, having a drink, seeing an old friend. I have a rival. I need solace. Solace. Unbelievable. Well, let's say you weren't at the synagogue the SA attacked last night. Does that give you solace? People were killed, Ernst. Go home. We don't serve your kind anymore. Laws. It's not our fault because the Jews are the cause for all our flaws. Oh, it's a shame, but true. Whatever's wrong, the Jews to blame. So blame the Jews. Go blame the Jews. The Jews are guilty, and it's not really You don't need brains to read the clues. The guilty party always is the Jews. So blame the Jews if we have flaws. It's not our fault because the Jews the cause for all the flaws. Oh, it's a shame, but true. Whatever's wrong, the Jews to This will be your new bedroom. You may decorate as you wish. You'll be spending a lot of time here. Unless you're with me, then a bodyguard must accompany you at all times. This is a dangerous world, Getty. 
and I'm here to protect you. Essay's broke. Hungry. Spoiling for a fight with anyone. Can I write about it? No. Because Hitler doesn't sell papers. Do you know what does? Gossip. Look at today's front page. Bavarian farm girl has religious visions. We've published, oh, I don't know, ten editions of that the last four days. She gives people hope. So does Hitler. People don't want the real news. They don't want to be depressed. They don't want to hear about anything they might have to do something about. It's as if we've all become stupid, gone blind. What on earth is happening to you? What? Since when have you become so contemptuous of people, Fritz? Don't raise your voice. Somebody has to. You're so busy scrutinizing him, you can't see that you're becoming like him. You're losing the best part of yourself. You can't stay like this. You'll either have to go forward or step back. But where you are at the moment is wrong. I can't go forward. I'll lose my job. If I lose my job... The only other choice is to be content with silence. But I know you better than that. The opposition papers are implying things about your relationship with your niece. I trust these Jews to paint everyone as dirty as they are. But it's not just them. People in the party are also beginning to object. She's my niece, for God's sake! We go to the opera together! seen a photograph that captures your eyes. It would be a shame to deprive us of their power. <laughs> What's your name? Ava. Ava Braun. Ava. She's a very pretty girl, your niece. See him again, I'll have him killed. Please. I want to go home. I don't want to be here anymore. Of course you do. No. I don't. I can't stand this anymore. You won't let me do anything. You won't let me make friends. You won't let me go out on my own. I'm sick of your speeches. I'm sick of your parties. I'm sick of you. Listen to me! different from other girls. You're sweet. You're sweet and innocent. And you don't understand what men like that want to do. Now, your Uncle Dolph is here to protect you. You will never be left alone with a man like that again. Million votes, 107 seats. We're the second biggest party in the Reichstag. Now, Goebbels, I couldn't have done this without you. How would you like to become my new Minister of Information? I would be honored, my Führer. Hans Stengel, your wife has prevailed upon me to promote you to 
I thought press secretary might see it. Thank you, Harry. Excuse me, Monsieur. Fräulein Gailey was caught outside getting into a taxi. She told the driver to take her to the train station. Excuse me for a moment. You must never, ever, ever try anything like that again. Do you understand me? Now listen, 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 listen. I had a dog like you once. Couldn't get it into her head who her master was, kept running away. So I penned her, she escaped. I beat her, she tried to bite me. I chained her and she strangled herself. She was stupid, Kelly. Don't be stupid. Take her home. Adi, we can't leave it like this. It's not right. And I can't bear it. You can't bear it. What about me? What about me? It's my gun. Addy. My God! Don't you see? Goddess of history is watching over everything I do now. Your citizenship, your new German citizenship.
Thank goodness your family changed its name. Or else we'd all be saying Heil Schickelgruber. <laughs> Here's to the next Reichs president. I think it's wonderful. I think it makes you look brave and strong and determined. Thank you, Fräulein Braun. I think so, too. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! The new German citizen Adolf Hitler is running for president. As Hitler makes history with his Germany flight, his message is loud and clear. A vote for the Fuhrer is a vote for the future. Heil Hitler! The hero of the is our model, and the music of Wagner is our inspiration. We will hang the profiteers. The Fuhrer is, the is now running for Reich president, and we are going to give him a run for his money. Seth, find out about his accounting practices. Write an article about them. Maria, get on the campaign trail. Find those that have heard him speak. Speak to those that disagree. Um, Herr Gallig, I thought you said no. No, Hitler, yes. Temporary insanity. Am I forgiven? <laughs> What does this mean? You said that you would stop. I'm doing my job. The job of every newspaper is to reflect its time. Don't you think if we ignore it, we'll be... Everybody out, quick, get out of here, come on! Oh, 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 everybody out! Next time, it could be a bomb. But it wasn't a bomb. <laughs> Don't you see? They're just angry because Look, people I'm are sorry, listening Prince. to what we have to Prince, say. Prince, if we still win... Fired. Will you be having lunch today, Fräulein Brown? Not today, Angela. It's all there is, you know. I beg your pardon? He treated my daughter the same way. Chained her, then abandoned her. I don't know what you're talking about. There's a locked room upstairs. Would you like to see it? Don't touch. They'll know you've been here. You can't compete. You're alive and she's a memory. His memory. Not mine. Not the real Gailey. I can't bring her back and I can't change what I allow to happen. But I can warn you, Fraulein. It's not going to get any better. This is his idea. Never you. What's this? He hates fresh flowers. He put it there himself, my dear.
once you've gone from this house by morning. Of course. I'm happy to take on another client. I'm not exclusive to the National Socialists, you know. What's it called? The Straight Path, after a quote from St. Paul. Oh, a religious paper. In its way, my client only asks that he not exercise editorial control over what he writes. <laughs> I'm a printer, my friend, not a publisher. I only care for the ink smears. Thank you so much. Did you sign the contract? Yes. But Fritz, this man prints the Nazi papers. This is the last place you want to publish. The contrary, Sepp. This is the one press Hitler can't afford to destroy. faces. 30% of the country voted for me. It's a far cry from 40 people in a beer hall. But we didn't win, my Fuhrer. Perhaps we need to rethink our strategy. If we don't deliver on our promises, our constituents will look elsewhere for a leader. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. All the right-wing factions are now backing us. Hindenburg has no choice but to offer me Chancellor. With all due respect, my Fuhrer, you and Hindenburg don't exactly see eye to eye. The chancellorship is the second most powerful position in the land. Why would he offer it to you? Because of all the trouble I can cause if he doesn't. You wanted to see me, Adolf. Would you excuse us for a moment, please, gentlemen? Please sit down. Now, it's very important that you don't speak. Not a word. I just want you to listen, understand? I've heard some rather disturbing news about you. Really? Shh! Not a word. Rumor has it I'm to be used as target practice. Really? Shut up! Let me finish, please. Over the years, the essay has become rather stubborn. As you know, I'm having a terrible time trying to steer them away from the concept of revolution. They have to be lockstep behind us. They're too rebellious. So, as of this moment, I'm handing the entire problem over to you. Call it a kind of test. If you succeed, then perhaps I can forget about this whole nasty business. Clear? Thanks for stopping by. And Ernst, please don't try this again. The challenge facing any new chancellor is how to deal with the National Socialists. If they paralyze the Reichstag again, which they do whenever they don't get what they want, we'll be forced to hold another election, a fourth this year. Chancellorship is a thankless job, Your Excellency. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I know, Pop, and I know. Stop! Look, I've dedicated my life to this country, and I intend to leave it in capable hands. So I've asked General von Schleicher here to be my new Chancellor. Congratulations, General. He has turned me down. He has instead suggested you, Franz von Papen, to be the new head of this government. Your Conservative, Catholic. Your Excellency. President Hindenburg, I, I'm not. Good. That's settled then. Now, let's begin with the largest threat to our democracy, Herr Hitler. Any suggestions? Might I suggest we put him in a position where we can control him? What position did you have in mind? Vice-Chancellor? You must be joking. Not at all. 
The vice chancellorship is the third most powerful position in Germany. My party's popularity demands a great deal more than third place. What precisely are you asking for, sir? I want the chancellorship, sir. Oh. That's my job. <laughs> I wouldn't laugh, General. Perhaps I'll take your job as well. Herr Reich President, surely you can see I'm a force to be reckoned with. The sooner you appoint me Chancellor, Approve my cabinet. I will never appoint you, Chancellor. How dare you presume, sir? You're nothing but a bohemian corporal. If I made you head of this government, how would I answer to God? And how will you answer to Germany if you don't? Good day, sir. I don't care what he says to God. I have it sooner than a person. Get me Rome. Let's show Hindenburg what answering to God looks like. Next, Next on the Reichstag, Reichstag agenda, agenda, I propose a bill regarding the allocation of money. Gentlemen, bunnies. we're leaving. Come on, let's go. By leaving, you will cause the dissolution of this elected body, and once again, by law, force a new election. Stop that. Two hundred and thirty seats. We're the largest party in the Reichstag. We are blessed by the providence of history. I How dare he demand the chancellorship again? I don't care how many seats Hitler holds, he will never be chancellor as long as I'm alive. The most he could be is my postmaster general. He could lick my behind when he puts on the stamps. May I make a suggestion, Herr Vice President? After your last suggestion, the Nazis took over the Reichstag. They're getting stronger all the time. Stronger, stronger. They're making a mockery of our government. Of us, gentlemen, of us. If I may offer an alternative plan, Herr Vice President. But Gregor Strasser is Hitler's second in command. He's very well liked in the party. I'm certain he would be more than willing to accept the vice chancellorship. You have spoken to him? Yes. He hates Hitler. This would effectively divide the National Socialists and completely neutralize the party. The one thing I do not want, gentlemen, is for my presidency to end in anarchy. Sorry, Papen, but I think General von Schleicher needs to try his luck at the Chancellorship. Herr Reich President, please. It's clear to me he had his eye on this position all along. He only used me to flush out the enemy. Give me one more chance, sir. No, gentlemen. I hereby appoint you Reich Chancellor. Good luck. The party is much more than you. You say that yourself. As Vice Chancellor, I'm going to unite the parties of the right, block the communists, increase our popularity. And how would you deal with traitors? I'm not a traitor, my Führer. Traitors are defined, Strasser, not by themselves, but by the people they betray. You would refuse Psyker's offer. And you will resign your party's position effective immediately. Herr Graf! Show this man out. I should be back by nine. Hmm. Make sure Egan is fed and put to bed. You know, Helena, we haven't had a meal together for days. I'm starting to think you're more involved in party politics than I am. <laughs> you find this amusing, Frida? I do not, Frau Hornstengel. I was only reading the paper. Something amusing in the papers. That's news. Listen to this. According to his own racial profiling, Hitler's nose is the same nose as that of Attila the Hun, a foreign invader, if there ever was one. How dare you bring this into my house? 
This is Jewish propaganda and should be burned. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I don't think you have any right to tell me what I can and what I can't read. I'll speak to you in the morning. You like it? <laughs> I bought it today. Set up a meeting with von Papen. Look, there is no doubt that Hindenburg made the greatest mistake of his life appointing Schleicher Chancellor. They both publicly humiliated him. This is your chance to get even. Gain that power back. He'll never appoint me Chancellor again. I don't know why But he would appoint you Vice-Chancellor under me. That's the point. The Cabinet would be reliably conservative. I'd leave these things to you. You're far more experienced than I. There is one minor problem. Hindenburg... <laughs> Hindenburg hates me. He must be persuaded. If there's one thing about him that hasn't diminished with age, it's his vanity. A well-placed public letter from you could work wonders. And a few disruptions in the Reichstag. My dear Reich's President von Hindenburg, all the great heroes of Germany were benevolent men who loved their people and who were loved in turn. Like Parsifal, like Lohner, like you. Germany is fortunate to have you as its leader. I give you my loyalty and my undying respect. Will the National Socialist Party please return to their seats? Will you please return to your seats? Like her. This is a price I thought you'd never have to pay. Get me Hitler.
Sorry, Addy. I just... I get so lonely and I need more time with you. Be patient, Ava. I still have enemies. Even when I'm made Chancellor, there are loose ends I must tie up. Do you promise to be good? Do you promise? Do you solemnly swear to carry out the obligations of the office of Chancellor without party interests and for the good of the nation? I do. And do you further swear to uphold the Constitution, support the President, and respect the right of the Reichstag? So help you God. I do. Please turn him off. Agalic. My name is George Bell. I've read your paper. We have a common enemy, you and I. As of today, all of Germany does. I'm what you might call an angry ex-Nazi. I used to work for Worm till he fired me. What about this one? What is this guy? Uh, that's, uh, that's yes. I heard there was a... Falling out? I wish to supply you with information. Damaging information, I think it'll help you. Hello. You may be using a pseudonym, but I know you're the one writing these things, Gannick. Good morning, Mula. I can't print this. Your last article was bad enough. He'll destroy my presses and sabotage my business. He won't destroy your presses. He needs them to print his paper. If anything, he'll destroy me. You're playing a losing game, my friend. We have a contract, Muller. I expect you to honor it. You're not long for this world. I don't want to hear it. Extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures. This isn't Remember. about history. This isn't about politics. It's about your life, Fritz, which also happens to be mine. Outrageous. And not a word is true. 
You expect us to believe that? What are you insinuating? I have nothing to do with this. What about yourself? This was a private, internal memo about using agitation in the SA! Do you have any idea how much damage you've done to us right now? I don't know how Kerish got a hold of this. But if you let me go to Munich, I will find his source of information. It's too late for that. Hindenburg read your article. I called the Fuhrer this morning. People everywhere are attacking Jewish businesses. Consequently, the economy is tumbling. Everyone's close to rioting, and this article is the last straw. If we don't bring this under control, and soon, Hindenburg says he'll declare martial law, and he'll bring the army in to do it. Then now's the time to storm the presidential palace, take over the government. Are you mad? Put me in charge of the army, and I'll unite them behind you. This is our chance. Great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Could it be because the army consider you a swine? At the mere suggestion, they flew the National Socialist flag rather than subordinate themselves to you. You and your essay, Ernst. Nothing more than political dinosaurs. You refuse to evolve, like the rest of us. Oh, believe me, Adolf, you don't want to meet what we're capable of evolving into. And to think he was once a friend of yours. Now he's just one of many who can trip us up. And the list keeps growing. He's right, you know. Sometimes primitive force is the only way. Helps if there's some kind of legal reason behind it, of course, something outrageous to provoke a response. What happened? Apparently, a Dutch communist broke in and set the fire. Police have him under arrest. Tell Rome he can still be of some service. You were talking about an enemies list. That's not a bad idea. This? This is a signal from God. We are under siege. The terrorists have opened fire, and we will fire back. To see him so happy. This is an outrageous crime, and someone will answer. But this completely overrides the Constitution. Effectively, it puts you in charge. These are troubled times, sir. The Constitution could not anticipate them. The National Monument has been destroyed. Our democracy is under attack. If we're to wage war on these foreign infiltrators, certain civil rights must be suspended. When power is seized instead of bestowed, the hand that seizes it is often burnt. The Reichstag must approve this before I sign anything. In order for the government to carry out necessary procedures against terrorism, Reichstag must support an enabling act. This act is your opportunity to hand power over those that can wield it most effectively. From now on, all legislation will be handled by the administration, which will have sole right to make constitutional changes. Freedoms of speech, association, and the press are temporarily suspended. Privacy rights in relation to telephone and postal communication are revoked. Order! Order! It's very good, sir, but let's use a larger typeface for Hitler. Hitler's just called an emergency meeting of the Reichstag. Wants their approval for something he calls the Enabling Act which will turn this country into a police state with him as absolute ruler. My God. No matter what he does, he just gets stronger. I'll bet the Nazis set the fire themselves. 
something I haven't told you. Once this is out, Rome will identify me as your source. My job as Rome's press secretary was just a front. He hired me to get financing outside of Germany. Financing? For what? The SA. He agreed to sign a contract with a man in London in exchange for exclusive oil imports to Germany. The Nazi party was given economic incentives to a foreign investor. What happened to Germans for Germany? Exactly. We've got to get this news to Hindenburg. And Bell, we've got to get you someplace safe. Set. I've got contacts in Berlin. I'll put you in touch with them. Go home, pack your bags. Go to the train station. Bell will bring my report to you there. We've got to hurry. The government assumes the right to intervene in any situation to restore order. The right to draft laws passes from the Reich's president to chancellor. I offer the Reichstag the chance for peace in Germany. Never. If you respect our country, the Reich Chancellor, please return to his seat. I will take any refusal as a statement of opposition. Gentlemen, you must decide. Will it be peace? Oh! Deutschland, Deutschland, über alles, über alles in der Welt. Wenn es jetzt zu Schuss und Kruse, Liebe lief zusammen hält. Auf der Basis, auf die Welt. I wish to see my husband. He can't be seen. He's in protective custody. Protective? From who? His enemies. Have you scheduled a trial date? Why would my answer be any different today than the answer I gave you yesterday or the day before? This is a notice from the Reich Court. It says that no charges are pending against him. 
If there are no charges, why can't he be released? He's in protective custody. Next. Frau Marta Kraus. We will not go away. We will not go away. Next. The jails are filled to capacity, and their wives are causing an international ruckus. Can I try these men and we can't release them? Camps. What? What about those camps? What else? Hindenburg is dying. And we've not yet resolved the issue with Rome. And of course, there's the army. The clock is ticking. I feel... I'll speak to Rome. I've spoken to Rome, sir, and he does nothing. I, I said I'll speak, speak to him! We were friends once, Ernest. You saw my potential before anyone else. You speak your mind, unlike the others. And you've always loved your men more than yourself, which is rare in a leader. But you refuse to bend. Why? You have power. I don't want the power. I want justice. And my men will promise. I don't care. I don't care. I don't give a damn about promises. You know this. You know this. Ernst, the SA are not now, nor will they ever be, the official German army. You must stand down. You're right, Adolf. We were friends once. And I will always speak my mind. I will not betray my men. I'm truly sorry to hear that, Ernst. Gather up your leaders and meet me at Bad Weisse on the 30th of June. see you again. I don't say this to shock. I say it because I must ask one more thing of you. Please live. Thank you. Urge others to speak out, even when what they have to say is not popular. Tell them to embrace courage as a gift and pass it on to their children. Just outside the village of Dachau. What are we doing here? of goodness and truth and devotion. Knowing that those qualities still survive in this world lets me leave it with a lighter heart. Don't mourn. I've given everything I have to this struggle, and my only option now is to give the last, most precious thing. It will mark this moment in time forever, so that people will remember. Yours always, Fritz.
One for you, one for you. Right. Here you go. Herr Hitler, I was wondering if I might have a moment. Yes, of course. <laughs> well, you see, it's my 20th reunion. And, uh, Helena and I have been planning a trip for over a year. You're not going to desert me again, are you? <sighs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm uh, simply asking your permission to... Why did you never call me Führer? I beg your pardon? Why did you never address me by my proper title? <laughs> I didn't know. If you'd like, I could. I'd like that very much. Very well, my Führer. Very good. Bring me something back. Preferably yourself and your lovely wife. Yes, we certainly do. I need to speak with you. Yes, my dear. We do. Will you excuse me, please? Of course, my dear. He said we can go. <laughs> Helena. We can catch the night train to Hamburg and be on a boat by tomorrow morning. This is a new beginning. I promise I'll be a husband again. A father to Egon. You've said that before. I know what I have. I'm not going with you, Ernst. This is my country now. And I won't abandon it just when it needs me most. <laughs> I'm not abandoning it. I've finally found someone whom I can believe in. Must make a decision. They need your order. My fear, you must make. Yes, a I heard you. Give him the gun. But Chief of Staff Rome was planning my assassination. I had no choice. I Führer. And so in his honor, I will bring you all into the Reichswehr army. You will once again Fight for a strong Germany! Subsequent to the death of President Hindenburg, the office of Reich's President will be combined with that of Reich's Chancellor. The army has devised an oath of unconditional loyalty to the person of the Fuhrer to be taken by every officer and soldier of the armed forces. To you, hereby swear allegiance. We do! Finest leader, enter Valhalla. At the same time, we mark the beginning of a new era. A time of peace and prosperity awaits us. The Thousand Year Reich has begun.
Sieg! Hell! Sieg! Hell!